everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be answering questions all about love in medical school. Questions about love in medical school are things that I get a lot in my DMs. It's totally normal to be someone looking for love in this world. So I'm gonna go through my Twitter messages and answer all your questions about love. By the way, please take all of this advice with a grain of salt. I am a medical student. I am not a professional. This is not professional advice. And this is just coming from personal experience. So my first question comes from Lexi Hall and she asks, do you feel like you need a guy who is also in medical school or in the medical field to date so he can understand your work and such. This is a pretty common question. Doctors tend to date other doctors in people's eyes, which makes a lot of sense to me. Especially now that I'm rotating through internal medicine, I work all day long. I get up at six and I don't come home till six in the afternoon. And that's already a lot for like my cat to handle. But that's definitely a lot for someone who doesn't have their own life to handle. And then when I come home, I study all day. So I just, don't have any time to see you, talk to you, be with you, but if I was dating a medical student, they would understand that I'm so busy and need less time with me because they're so busy. Like on the real guys, I haven't seen my actual boyfriend who is a medical student in like a week. Uh, probably even more than a week and because I'm always so busy and this is like my one day off and I'm filming YouTube videos. You just have to be really understanding about it because I'm already in my third year of medical school and I'm not going <laughs> to quit medical school for no one. <laughs> I am too deep into this experience. I cannot look back. Queen P asks, would you rather have a baby in med school or in residency? Um, I'd rather have a baby like not when I'm doing either. <laughs> like after residency, that would be the more convenient time. But if I had to pick, I think medical school because medical school is not as hard as residency and um, I'd rather have like the baby already be two years old or something by the time I get to residency so that it can like be potty trained and stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. How does a relationship work if the majority of your time is spent learning and working? Well, I work a lot and study all the time so I have no time to cheat on you, do you wrong or lie or do any other malicious thing. I go on a date about once a week lately. We text and call and talk about how work is going. Would you even recommend dating in medical school? If you're like me, and you dealt with a whole bunch of losers before medical school, uh, a whole bunch of mean, cheating, lying fools. Medical school is filled with mature, nice, going somewhere people. Those are the kind of guys that I want to date personally. <laughs> Not only are they cute in your eyes, but they're going to be a doctor and they're nice enough that they even chose medicine as a profession. I mean, obviously not all of them are nice and sweet and amazing, but a lot of them are. And um, I just think that, you know, that's prime time to look around and be like, these are my options. There's just too many losers to filter through in college and high school. But in medical school, they're kind of concentrated in one area. Would you be scared to date someone in medical school as it could always be a competition between you two? That's an awesome question. You guys are coming up with awesome questions. I'm so happy I left the video up to you guys. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, you know, your girl, I, I study hard. I work really hard. Um, so I haven't really had that problem. <laughs> if I was dating a guy who is like way smarter and better at school than me, I just feel like I would be like, ooh, you know? I wouldn't be like, ah, so lame, I hate him. No, I would just be like, dang, okay, I see you. Smart. That's that's why I dated you. No, I'm no, just kidding. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm about to, my face is about to fall off. I'm smiling too much. How do you find time to go out on dates? Well, I get out of work at six, so after that, I can always have dinner with my boyfriend. I get one day off a week so I can spend time with him on my day off. It's really hard, guys. It's pretty hard. Uh, I one time overheard an OB Gin resident talking to another resident, <laughs> telling her how she hasn't seen her husband in like a week, and the guy was like, I haven't seen my wife in a week and they were just like high-fiving about it and um yeah that was really like traumatic to hear because if you don't make it a priority it's really easy to be like those residents i was talking about and just like never seeing them and never texting them never calling them and you only see them at night and they're already asleep you gotta make it a priority don't forget to do that if love is important to you do you plan on doing a couples match can you explain the process a bit? Couples matching is when you and your significant other apply to a residency together as like 
one. So you take me and you take him or you don't take either of us. This could be a kind of tough decision if you both wanted to go to different places or if one of you was like super smart and the other one wasn't. You can only get into places that would accept this person and so you kind of have to settle. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of like mature thinking conversation that has to happen there that I just have not had. How do you not get a crush on coworkers of yours? Well, first of all, first and foremost, n no, no crushes on patients. No, like it's sick, don't do it, don't think about it, never do it, don't even think about think about thinking about it. Grounds to lose your license if you date a patient. I remember at orientation for medical school, a student was talking to all of us and she was saying, if you plan on dating another medical student, be super cautious and serious because you're going to be with that person for four years in the same classroom, in the same rotations, working together. So if you get together, break up, like you're going to see each other all the time. There's nothing wrong with dating another med student in your class. That happens all the time. There's just so many couples in my class right now. I mean, we're always with each other. We, we have no other options because I don't know people who aren't in my class. But med students dating residents, um, I mean like every time you work with a resident, you should always be super professional and not ever make a resident feel like you like them like that because they, they they're grading you one and two you could make them uncomfortable if i was a resident and like a med student was hitting on me that would be weird you always have to remember that some people are just more powerful than you they're like a higher rank than you so med student resident attending and you know you kind of just have to stay in your lane how do you keep the sparks going in a relationship when you are so busy in medical school that's actually a one million dollar question how do you keep a spark the spark that united you together where you're infatuated with each other and so attracted to each other and love each other so much when you see each other once a week or once every two weeks it's extremely difficult i guess texting each other all the time calling each other making sure we always look good because you know as a med student especially as a you know me as a feminine girl i let myself go when, when i am in my rotations like my hair will be up I am in scrubs, I don't have makeup on for months, and I could be eating poorly and not exercising. I would say text each other, tell each other that you love each other every day, hang out with each other when you can, try to stay fit, try to look good when you're around them, study together, that's something that us med students can do with each other all the time. And when you do go on dates, try to make them super special and amazing, like making cookies and drinking champagne while you study and then watching a movie together or going out on a picnic or something super fun, not just sitting on the couch and watching TV, but make it super memorable and romantic. Would I rather date someone who is in medical school or someone in a different field? Uh, I would rather date someone in medicine because I love medicine and it'd be so cool if the person I was with for the rest of my life loved medicine so that we could just love medicine together. I think doctors are freaking amazing and they're just so educated, empathetic, wise, and they usually have their life together. It would be really hard for me to date someone not in medicine. That This is like all I know. And not only that, I don't, I don't talk to people who aren't in medicine. So I don't know how I would even meet someone who's not in my field. Like to be completely honest. When you were single, did you ever reach a time where you thought love isn't meant for you? Oh no, I've always been a hopeless romantic. I've never given up on love. I've always been scared because I've heard stories. I remember one time another classmate was telling me how this ob -gin was yelling at her saying, look at my life, look at it. I'm 40 years old and I'm single, is this what you want? I just didn't want to be bitter and loveless and I was really scared about it. And then when you're scared about being single, you might settle for something that is less than what you want. In medicine, there's a lot of pressure to be perfect, to have your life together. There's a lot of pressure to be in a relationship and be married because that's part of being perfect. The married doctor with the house and the dog and the two kids, you know, whatever. Always just send her back Think about what you want and don't settle for anything less than that. Look for it until the bitter end. I wanna thank you guys so much for all of these amazing, insightful questions. Hopefully I was able to answer 
some of them i know it wasn't all of them because a lot of you had questions about this there's nothing wrong at all with thinking about these things and wanting a relationship and seeking love in this world and i absolutely have no problem answering them now to end this video my good friends nancy and mitchell wanted to tell me about what it's like to be married in medical school something that i don't have any insight on but they did and here they are to talk about it my name is nancy and i'm a nurse and i am uh, mitchell and uh, I'm a med student. It's okay, he can just join. <laughs> I'll deal with it. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. I mean, <laughs> Come here, you need to chill. An accurate reflection of our day. <laughs> yes. Just get used to being distracted and like putting work. stuff down and coming back to it and forgetting what you were doing. When I'm at work, I'm at work. I'm with my patients and paying attention to them. I'd be at home, be here with the family and everything, and then when they would go to sleep, I would watch my lectures. <laughs> I think it's great because I think Nancy's very understanding. She understands when she went through nursing school. So she understands like really well that, hey, when I have to buckle down and study. Healthcare is sort of a, a culture where it's your life and you're just, you're always there, right? Like physicians are always at the hospital. Nurses are always at the hospital. So where do you meet people? Where do you social, where is your social support? It's at the hospital. And so that's why I think there's so much dating that happens at the hospital. Nancy, what are the unique difficulties you have being married to a med student? Oh gosh, there's so many. <laughs> Uh, where do I begin? There's this saying, um, we are widows to medicine. Perfect way to kind of describe what it feels like at times. There are moments where, like Mitchell was saying, when he where he needs to buckle down that I feel like as a wife, like I, and as a mom, it's just kind of difficult to do it all on my own. Uh, taking care of two kids and, you know, birthing two kids. It's always like right when he's about to have like a final exam. That's been our luck. So, um, but you know, one thing that I definitely learned though is I'm able to be more empathetic because I am in the healthcare field as well. And so I understand that when he needs to sit down and study, he needs to sit down and study. And I do my best to take the kids um, away and out of the house for a while so that they're not you know, always seeking dad, you know. As a wife you, and a mom, you just want the biggest joy that you can ever receive is just seeing your family happy and seeing them thrive. The biggest positive that I've seen is Witnessing Mitchell kind of grow as a person, witnessing that he is able to do hard things, kind of like juggle, I guess, his schedule as a father, as a student, and as a husband. Sometimes I don't have to tell him, like, Mitchell, hey, help out at the house or do this. Sometimes he'll just do it on his own, and I think he's beginning to learn kind of how to, like, manage it all. Uh, med school has actually been awesome, because being a dad and a husband in med school has allotted me time to really have a good relationship with the kids. Especially with our program having lectures that we can stream. I was able to be here in the morning, do breakfast with the kids. But yeah, I mean, I'm obviously I'm looking forward to the future, but I'm also trying to enjoy the moment now. Pre-med students, med students, just students in general, I think are bad at that. One of our best friends was a fourth year who passed away uh, in January. That was a big reminder to just enjoy today. Clearly we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Like if I have time off, I spend it here, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm here with the kids, I'm here with Nancy. And and when I'm at the hospital, I'm FaceTiming them on break or I'll, I'll make time. Yes, a hundred percent. Even as parents, we are learning every single week. Do you guys believe that there is no perfect time to have a child or would you have done something different? I think there's no perfect no time. No perfect time. I, no regrets. No, no. I, I think you make you you set your priorities, right? You have time in life for what you have, what you make time for. You want to be top of the class, then you're gonna make be top of the class, right? Like if that's your thing and that's what's important to you, then you're gonna do that. For me, that's, that was never my goal. It is possible to, to be a, a good dad and a good husband and. To do that. Yes, it is certainly doable. I wish we can give you a plan, a layout yeah, of, no how to. of how to do it or when to do parenthood or how to raise a child. Every family is unique, everyone is different. But you know, take comfort in the fact that you will know, you will feel it in your heart and your mind and soul when it's time for you to pursue that goal, you know, whether it be a relationship or whether it be a family, you'll know when it's right. And then if you do decide to, you know, pursue a relationship or start a family, figure it out along the way. So it's a very uh, learn along the way process. It really is. <laughs> Trial and error all the time, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Nancy and Mitchell, for being in my video and being so kind to tell the world about what marriage is like in medical school. It might be super hard but they seem to have it together thank you guys so much for watching this video and i will see you in my next one goodbye everybody